In this video, we'll use the details from a checkout session to display an order confirmation page after our customer completes their payment in checkout and is redirected back to our site. We're going to be building on code we generated using the Checkout Quick Start Integration Builder. If you don't already have that code, you can find the links in this video's description to both the Checkout Quick Start as well as to other videos in this series. Let's quickly review our application. We have a route, create checkout session, that is called when our customer clicks the submit button on our checkout.html page. The route generates the underlying checkout session object and redirects the customer to Stripe's hosted checkout. When the customer completes the payment, they are redirected to our success.html file, which at the moment is just a static HTML page. We're going to change that now and use the information we get in the checkout session object to display a more customized page. The first thing I'm going to do is change the success URL set in the session create call to add session ID as a query parameter. I'll set this to the checkout session ID template variable. Checkout will populate this variable when my customer is redirected to my success page. We'll try this out by restarting our server and going through the checkout flow. And we can see that the template variable has been replaced with an actual session ID. Let's make some changes to the front end files to use the session ID to look up the checkout session. I'm going to add a JavaScript file, success.js, and a script tag referencing it in success.html. In our JavaScript file, we'll take the session ID we received as a URL parameter and pass it back to our server, to a route called order info. Let's add this new route to our server. The order info route will take a session ID parameter and make an API call to retrieve the session object. While the customer's email address will be included in the session object, we won't have their name. So we'll make a second API call to get the corresponding customer object using the customer ID from the session. We'll restart our server and test this out. We can call the route directly to see the JSON response from the server. Okay, that's working. So let's go back to our success page and add some HTML to display the information. I'm going to give my section element a class of order info and I'll add some list elements. For this example, I'm going to display the name and email of the customer, the order total, and the payment status. I need to style this a bit, so in my CSS file, I'm going to add some class-specific styles. I'll set the height and the list style for the unordered lists to be none. I'll remove the flex style from the paragraph so it spans the whole width of the section, and lastly, I'll center the header at the top. Back to success.js, where we will insert the customer and order information into the HTML we just wrote. To start, I'm going to create a little helper function, setText, that will update the content of a given element. I'll use this to display the name and email address from the customer object. If I didn't have the customer object, I could pull the email from the session object. Next, I'll display the payment status attribute from the session object. To display the readable order total, I'll start by creating a currency formatter set to the session currency. Payment amounts are expressed using the smallest unit for the currency, our price is in dollars, so the amount total would be returned to us in cents, and I'll need to divide that amount by 100. Now when we refresh our success page, we'll see it's displaying order-specific information instead of the old static page. Let's quickly review how we built this page. We appended the checkout session ID template to the success URL attribute we passed in when we created our checkout session. This gave us access to the session ID when our customer was redirected back to our site after completing checkout. We took the ID, sent it back to our server, and made two API calls, one to get the checkout session and one to retrieve the associated customer. We used this information to then display a customized page. If we go through the checkout flow one more time, we can see that our cancel page is also static. And it might be nice to give our customers an option to return to their checkout session from this page. We can use the session ID to do that. We'll start by adding the checkout session template variable to our cancel URL. And in cancel.html, we'll add a form button so the customer can return to checkout. By default, we'll set the action of the form to create a new checkout session in the event someone lands on this page and there's no session ID in the URL. We'll add a little bit of JavaScript to the page to grab the session ID from the URL and change the form action to a new route, which takes the ID as a parameter. And back in our server file, we'll add a return to checkout route that takes a session ID, retrieves the associated session object, and then redirects the customer to checkout using the session URL. Let's try this out by restarting our server and going through the checkout flow one more time. We'll initially cancel out of checkout, and then we'll try to checkout again. We'll complete the order and go to our success page.
Now if we look at our server logs, we can see the same session ID being included in all the calls as we went through our flow. Thanks for watching. You can find more resources on getting started with checkout in this video's description. Bye.